In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So yesterday evening, as if uh, yesterday's celebration wasn't uh, touching enough, we decided uh, as a family to watch Wonder. Uh, we'd all read the book, and we were hesitant to watch the movie just because, you know, often uh, it doesn't quite do the book justice, but we decided uh, that we would go ahead and watch it. And there are ways in which the book is still uh, better, and I recommend that book to anybody um, if you haven't read the book Wonder. Uh, but the movie does hit on things in some ways, and, uh, and it creates some images that uh, really uh, hammer home the story. Uh, the storm, story is about Augie Pullman and his family. Uh, he is a, a, a boy uh, in fifth grade uh, who has been homeschooled his whole life uh, because he was born uh, with physical deformities. He's had almost 30 surgeries on his face, and um, he is so insecure uh, about his looks that he wears an astronaut helmet whenever he goes out in public. Uh, and this isn't just an internal uh, discomfort. He's realized the effect that his appearance has on others uh, as, as children often struggle uh, to hide their primary reaction. And uh, at, at public parks in New York City where they live, uh, children have run away scared when they've seen his face. Uh, and so he's pretty much retreated to his own house uh, and has been raised in his own house. Um, and whenever he goes out, has this helmet he wears. Uh, but his mom realizes it's time to throw him outside into the world, for him to have the experience of a normal life, uh, as normal as his life might be able to be. And uh, mom and dad argue over whether or not this is the right path. Uh, the dad sort of feels like this is uh, a lamb being thrown to the wolves, um, but the mom realizes they can't keep protecting him forever. And so they do. They, they take him and he, and he goes to school. And before he goes to school, uh, he meets with one of my favorite characters, um, uh, the principal, who really is trying to create a culture uh, in which a student like Augie uh, would be not just accepted but loved. Uh, and he even uh, leads with his own vulnerability. Uh, he said, yes, my name is Mr. Tushman. I get it all the time. Uh, they call me butt man. Or, uh, you know, and he went through the whole myriad of things. Even on his desk is a little figurine uh, where uh, one anatomical feature of him is highlighted uh, with, with the name Tushman at the bottom. Uh, you know, but he, he's trying to show his own vulnerability uh, so that Augie might, uh, might realize that everybody uh, has uh, broken places. Everybody uh, has places of fragility, uh, places of vulnerability. Uh, uh, not everybody wears them in 30 surgeries on their face, but everybody uh, does. And one of the scenes in the, in the, the movie uh, that struck me even more powerfully than the book um, was that first day of school. Uh, and as a father, watching uh, the, the dad uh, uh, as the back of uh, of Augie gets farther away as he's walking uh, very slowly uh, into the schoolyard for the first time, and you see on the dad's face all of that anxiety, uh, all of those uh, fears of what, what could happen, uh, that he is sending his most vulnerable, uh, beloved son uh, uh, into the world in a new way. Um, and you can just see in every footstep as he watches him, uh, uh, his fear and his prayers for his son. Uh, but because Augie wears all of his vulnerability, all of his brokenness in a way that other people can protect, uh, we can put him underneath our jacket, underneath our sweater, uh, we can uh, lead with our strengths, uh, our athletic prowess, our academic gifts, uh, our power, our money, our intellect. Uh, he wears them all, all of the broken places he wears right there on his face. Uh, and so when he goes into the world, his vulnerability leads the way. Uh, and it challenges the DNA of the school. How are they going to respond? And it's, it's complicated. They are kids, uh, and they respond in all the ways that you'd expect kids to, to respond. Some ways uh, incredibly graceful uh, with an acceptance that, uh, uh, that, that belies uh, what, what parents and adults uh, sometimes are capable of, uh, but also uh, in the, the honest, uh, uh, unfiltered uh, difficulty with, uh, with his physical appearance. And, um, and there's rejection, and there's places where the DNA seems, uh, uh, seems to choose uh, everything other than acceptance, and there are places where their very innate DNA seems to, seems to uh, encourage acceptance. And you realize that um, 
one other place where the movie really does a wonderful job is uh, you realize how difficult just walking down the hallway. Uh, each step that he takes, every day that he goes back to school, uh, you realize what kind of strength and what kind of character uh, Augie shows uh, uh, in carrying his vulnerability uh, as bravely and as proudly, uh, carrying his, his cross, his broken places uh, into the school. Uh, and, um, and the principal tries uh, as hard as he can to affect the DNA in the school. Um, and uh, you do realize over time uh, and I'm not sure whether Augie is changing the DNA of the school or whether the truest DNA, uh, the part that's uh, beneath all of the things that we show the world first, all of the things that we prioritize, uh, popularity, uh, the right clothes, the right backpack, uh, the right social circle, once those uh, wear away and we get to our core, uh, that the true, uh, the true DNA, the true identity uh, of the school comes forward. Uh, and we see that wrestling match. But at the very end, and I am sort of spoiling uh, a little bit the ending, but um, you've had about eight, year, eight years to read the book, so I'm, I'm, I feel okay with it. Um, and it doesn't spoil it. I still think you should go see. Uh, but on the last day of fifth grade, uh, Mr. Pullman, the principal, uh, uh, not Mr. Pullman, uh, uh, Mr. Tushman, uh, 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 he tells this, um, this anecdote about uh, what truly is greatness uh, as he's presenting an award uh, to the student that's exhibited. And he said, you know, um, greatness is not strength or the ability to show strength. Uh, he says, you know, greatness is how we use that strength. And the ultimate showing of greatness is using that strength to lift people's hearts up. And he said, using the radiation of his own heart, this particular student has raised up the hearts of others. Think of those words as I get to the gospel in a little bit. That the characteristic of greatness is not strength, but how we use that strength to lift up the hearts of others, to radiate from your heart so that other hearts are lifted up. And as he announces that that student, that great student, um, uh, was, was Augie Pullman and the entire crowd rises up, you realize that either he has changed the DNA of the school or the true nature of the school and the individuals, the students, uh, has risen above all the things that, that, uh, that I think keep us from our truest selves. So think about that as I go to the gospel. We have the gospel in John and... Uh, uh, John, John describes Jesus going uh, to the cross in a much different way than the synoptics do. Uh, Jesus has a confidence uh, and an articulation of what is happening that is much more clarified 100 years later in, in John's version uh, than in some of the others. Uh, so John's uh, gospel already has Jesus having uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. Uh, the miracle to end all miracles, the miracle that will most certainly end up with him uh, nailed to the cross for the real miracle that uh, uh, ends all miracles. Uh, but he goes from there in Bethany, uh, down the mountain uh, towards Jerusalem. Uh, uh, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem that we'll celebrate next Sunday has taken place, and he is in Jerusalem about to be arrested and killed. And his celebrity has never been greater. Everybody has heard of Jesus by this point. He's the only person in the history of time uh, that has twice raised somebody from the dead. There's no surviving it, but there's also no ignoring it. And so these Gentiles come at, out of probably curiosity, probably because of the celebrity status that Jesus has at this point, and they want to see Jesus. We would like to see Jesus. Funny, in preschool chapel, we've been talking uh, the last two weeks about people trying to see Jesus. Uh, two weeks ago, we had Zacchaeus. I remember the story of Zacchaeus, who's too short to see Jesus, and he can't see in the picture book. He can't see through the crowd or over the crowd, so he gets this idea, and he runs, and he goes, and he climbs a tree, and Jesus crosses underneath the tree, and he says, Zacchaeus, come on down. I want to have dinner at your house. And he says, you know what? You prop yourself up with your wealth place that covers your vulnerability, that hides the truest self, uh, is the uh, money you've extorted uh, through taxes of your fellow uh, brothers and sisters. Part ways with that to follow me. Because when you want to see Jesus and Jesus invites you in, uh, it involves transformation. It involves acknowledging those places that are broken uh, and leaving away those places that you've propped yourself up. 
And then last week in preschool chapel, we talked about the story of Bartimaeus, whose vulnerability is his blindness. And his vulnerability is how he comes to see Jesus. Uh, he can't see, but he can hear especially well. And he hears a ruckus uh, as people are walking down the streets. Uh, and he asks what's going on. And they say, uh, we're walking with Jesus. And he calls out uh, and amidst all of the chaos of the people mar marching and walking and the voices, uh, Jesus hears him and asks what he wants. And he says, I'd like to see again. Uh, and he cures him. And he takes that place of vulnerability. And it becomes a place where he can see God clearly and follow him. So Jesus, to the people who say, I want to see Jesus, he says, you know what? Absolutely, but this is what it's about. It's about leaving behind those things that you hold on too tightly to. It's about finding the broken or vulnerable places inside of you and leading from there. It's about being willing to give up everything for something that really matters. It's about following where I'm going, which is to leave everything so that you will know how much I love you and that I can draw all things to myself by pouring out my heart, radiating my love so that all might be lifted up. And Jesus used that beautiful description. Like a single grain of wheat. Our lives are like a single grain of wheat. If we hold on so tight to those things that we think prop up our lives, uh, to our power, our status, our car, our house, uh, our, uh, our intellect, any of the things that we think make us uh, uh, better than the person next to us or at least look good in their eyes, we only have that one single life. But if we're willing to drop it, to lead with our vulnerability, to put those things down so that we might be able to be transforming agents in the world, something amazing can take place. And Jesus uses that example, that single grain of wheat, and a single seed, in order for something new to take, take place, in order for new life to be born, that single seed has to be broken open and die. And before it does, it nourishes the embryo. It gives its life, nourishing the embryo, so that a new shoot can rise up. The church is that embryo. Jesus is that seed. He was broken open, spilled out, gave his life for the nourishment and new birth of the church so that we might grow and be the agents of love in the world. That seed that's broken open and lifted up so that that love might radiate far and wide from that broken place, that place on the cross. So remember that line and that uh, beautiful uh, ending to the story. Greatness, greatness is being able to use that strength to radiate from your heart to draw all hearts up. Jesus uses his power break himself open so that something new that's life-giving could be born. And it's nourished. And it's nourished every week as we come to the table. And we're fed and nourished by that very body and blood that was broken open for all of us. Amen.